spoke about the flight harness and how it can provide um, our birds with socialization, being able to take them out places, but there are certain cases that the harness just won't cut it. No. So um, <laughs> they'd have to go and drive in your car. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We wouldn't leave your bird. I don't think our caretakers are that irresponsible that they would be driving in their car with a bird on the harness. Of course not. So there, there's numerous other situations too where a bird can benefit from having been comfortably desensitized to spending time in the transporter. Uh, traveling to the vet clinic, of course, is exactly. one of them. Uh, long trips in the car, the plane. Mm -hmm. Often birds leave our care and they have to be trained or prepared or desensitized to do several hours because sometimes they're flown throughout the country. Exactly. So it's very important and a very big responsibility once again. Uh, in the past we didn't used to think about that. We used to raise our birds, make sure they were healthy, make sure they were weaned properly. And, and, and then we'd put them in a transporter and we'd send them off and we always kind of felt bad, you know, maybe they're not used to it. Uh, there's limitations, of course, to how much desensitization that we can do because we don't usually do this for a long period of time. No. We had just mentioned the importance of desensitizing the bird to the transport carrier to bring it to the vet, whether it be for a routine exam or for emergency situations, but there are other emergency situations that would require the bird to stay in a transport carrier for a lot longer. Yes. There, there's, there can be numerous situations, natural disasters, there can be an evacuation, there are going to be temporary relocation where you're forced to leave your home for several days, whether it's for a personal emergency or something happened to your home, but there's, there's numerous situations where the birds may have to live in his transporter for a relatively longer period of time than just simply for travel. So uh, the earlier he can get used to actually being comfortable in his, tra in his transporter, the better. The earlier he can actually be comfortable to eating in there and drinking mm -hmm. and not being uh, fright, not feeling any right. fear, yes. then the better it is for everybody. For sure, the investment of a transport carrier case is, is one that is essential, mm -hmm. uh, along with the new bird exam and the acquisition of your bird. Uh, I don't think in this day and age that we have parrots leaving pet stores, or breeders for that matter, in cardboard boxes. I mean, it's definitely a very important uh, investment and, and necessary emergency tool for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and this, once again, if the breeder um, can discusses with the caretaker and informs them as to what type of carrier that he's been training the bird to, mm -hmm. or actually makes it available with the delivery of the bird, or when the caretaker picks up the baby at his place, then uh, definitely this will enhance you know, the, and, and, and favor the desensitization because it's something once more that the bird is leaving home with. Right that he was comfortable with. Right. Now, of course, Suzanne in here, uh, the cage is not accessorized. We'll talk about that a little bit after, but it's important to mention that this bird is away from his cage mates just for this picture. Right, because when we would start desensitizing the birds to the carrier, we would do it on the floor, and the fledgling would be with his flock mates, yes. with other fledglings. He wouldn't be taken away. No, and we usually use the open carrier as a hide-and-seek tool, mm -hmm. and then we put foraging toys in there, as you can see here, and we might even put a water bottle, and we're actually playing with the birds, and they're each uh, going in there one by one, especially if we make a game out of it. And at this point, you know, they're still in their stage four, where they're not starting to stay away from the flock individually. Now, this uh, Madrid Conyer is at a stage six, so he has been in a transporter, he has been in a transporter with a towel on top of him as well covered to mimic what it would be like to actually take a plane. Right. Uh, normally when the birds are actually flying out, we try and, and do some kind of visual barrier for them in case they get put face to face with another animal species <laughs> during the flight. So it's very important that this particular individual has been used to it, but for the demonstration of this purpose of this photo, we wanted to show you how we gradually start. So although it is very important to desensitize our birds to the transport carrier, there is a danger of overdoing it. Yes. As the bird ages, it's very important that we don't give them free access to the to carrier. No, uh, I was the owner and caretaker of Malek and Cockatoos for several, several years, and I did overdo it. I used to travel a lot with my birds, and unfortunately, I didn't realize the onset of the, the reproductive age. And of course, my male Malek and Cockatoo especially was actually favoring to choose to go into the carrier all the time. He was perceiving this as his nesting cavity. And uh, it took me, unfortunately, too long to realize this was going on. Mm. So this can be relatively uh, a relatively short period of time for a conure species that reaches maturity at a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure not to allow them to go in there too often. Uh, little timeouts once in a while can be good. 
but then again, not too long in that type of an environment. Mm -hmm. I think we should discuss now what type of uh, transport yes. carrier we could be using. For sure. Uh, definitely, they must be species uh, suitable. Mm -hmm. So that can vary from species to species. Uh, we have this uh, very commonly available uh, dog and cat transporter that can be accessorized with a perch, with a water bottle, as we mentioned before, with food that doesn't spoil, you know, yes. yeah. foraging. Foraging, for sure. But uh, it's very important that the materials chosen be suitable for the species and the strength of their beak. Exactly. And of course, at the front here, if there's any type of wire, it's the same recommendation as for the cages. Mm -hmm. So they don't uh, have entrapment with their heads and they cannot injure themselves. Because obviously a, a carrier that might be suitable for a smaller species might not work for a cockatoo or a large macaw. No, and in that particular situation, we're actually talking about a species and not necessarily a size. Mm -hmm. Because an Amazon might be fine in our fame. The one that we prefer actually is the pet cabrio, which is a transporter that opens up from the top, has a viewing window. The food dishes are perfectly positioned right in front. There's little spoilage there. We can easily adapt a, a perch and then open up the top and it can convert into a tabletop, temporary little hangout for your bird when you're visiting guests. Uh, this pet cabrio, although it's not suitable for cockatoos that have a very, very strong beak. And so it is fine for most Amazon species, but not for the same relatively sized bird right. like a cockatoo species. So we have to keep that in mind for sure. Accessorizing the pet transporter and carrier is very important and often, unfortunately, we see birds traveling on very unhygienic uh, substrates such as seed bedding or corn cob and, and it's a very important uh, point to mention because there's a serious health consideration and this can lead to a, a lot of infections especially and perhaps impactions. So it's very important that uh, caretakers recognize that there are suitable substrates if you choose to use one, right? Such as uh, spin and recycled newspaper pellet, a mix exactly. of those two, or cage paper liner. Cage paper liner, and of course we usually recommend that people travel with an extra roll of and paper towels, towels. Yeah, so that they can add several layers as they go, especially if this bird might be traveling in a transporter for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, some species require a much higher transporter as well, so that they can actually uh, be allowed to uh, relieve themselves when they need to, and if they cannot move their tail and their bum a little bit, then that's impossible. So this is very important for some species, other species might not be a problem. So height might also be a, a factor. Mm -hmm. Something else that a uh, caretaker might take into consideration before investing in a carrier is whether they're going to be flying. <laughs> so yes. if, they, if they're going to need an, an airline approved carrier or not. Very important. The pet cabrio is definitely airline approved, but not all models uh, might be. And so this is information that should be uh, gained and uh, asked prior to purchasing your pet transporter for sure. And also the heaviness of it, because uh, some transporters are very, very heavy and the longevity and the easy to the care. Some transporters also offer an additional feature where you can actually pull out a tray right. in order to be able to do easier cage maintenance. And this is probably the preferred choice for people that might be living in territories or zones of the world where there's a lot of evacuation possible. Exactly. We're going to be speaking now about desensitization to travel, which obviously comes after desensitization to the transport carrier. Um, this is probably the last lesson that the um, bird will learn before leaving the perhaps, bird. Perhaps, unless he's been perhaps visiting a veterinarian or another reason why the bird would have been taken out at a younger mm -hmm. age. But yes, this is usually the final stage uh, after the bird is comfortable in the transporter. Right. And it doesn't have to be a long experience. But we feel, and, and we don't want to relate to birds as humans, but we feel that you know, it's kind of nice for them to actually travel and come back to our care and come back to their flock. Mm -hmm. It allows them to have perhaps a, less, a bit less uh, se uh, separation anxiety. Right. And so it's, it's important for us to, to do this exercise, especially before the bird uh, travels for a long period of time in a flight. Right. We want to make sure that this is a positive experience for the bird as well. Yes, and so there's numerous things that we can do to make this a more fun experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the caretaker, the one that has become the flock mentor of this bird, 
uh, should be the one traveling with him, even if that means just a few blocks and coming back home. Right. Uh, the reassurance from our voice. A lot of vocal praise. And even our presence is yes. important as well. Uh, if there's an amazingly fun sound of music that we've been listening to when the birds are flocking in the morning and misting in the rain, you know, with a little bit of Latin American music, then perhaps this is something we want to take to the car as well. Right. It also it helps if they have another bird with them. Yes, a bird that they're compatible with yes. and that they feel reassurance with can definitely help. Uh, if the bird uh, is uh, tied inside of the car, it should be done safely as well. Yes, there are a lot of issues, uh, concerns that we have to um, address right now when you're putting a transport carrier in a car. Um, we noticed that we have the seat belt on here. Yes. Um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> we would also want to make sure that we wouldn't do this desensitization um, in extreme hot weather or extreme cold weather either. No. We have to pay attention to the temperature of the car. So This is very important because it, it also should be a philosophy that mm -hmm. caretakers should understand that birds would not be traveling on those particular days unless absolutely necessary. And none of our birds actually leave when there is extreme uh, weather warnings, right. whether it be a snowstorm or hot weather. Right. Uh, the same as we don't recommend people buying fish on hot days. Uh, finches for sure are more sensitive to this than parrots, but pa parrots can definitely overheat mm -hmm. or get cold in a car for sure. Yeah. Uh, as well, if the bird were to be perched, um, it would be an, it's a good idea to have the bird facing sideways. That way it can keep its balance better when the car is... Yes, uh, and this is one that we often not, not remember to think about, mm -hmm. but it's definitely important for sure. Uh, it's also very important that uh, when we're bringing the bird to the car, if it's a cold winter day, that we're actually pre preventing the bird from getting cold. And also perhaps putting air conditioning in the car if right. it's a very warm day. Right. We also wouldn't want to leave the, the bird in a car that was running. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely. Because of the car carbon monoxide issue. Which the birds are, are highly sensitive to. Yes. 